King Hamad bin Al Khalifa of Bahrain has promised to launch a national dialogue aimed at reconciling his country after a brutal crackdown on anti-government protesters. It is hard to take this seriously or see any real chance of success when many of the people who should be at the negotiating table are still in jail. At a time when the Sunni-led minority government should be showing good faith, it did the opposite. A military show trial last week convicted 21 activists, almost all Shiites, on charges of conspiring to overthrow the government during the Arab Spring demonstrations. Most fundamentalists or defendants received terms of up to 15 years, but eight were sentenced to life in prison. Why would anyone trust the government after that? Bahrain's claims that Iran is the hidden hand behind the unrest are exaggerated. The protests have been led by Bahraini Shiites demanding fair treatment in housing, education, and employment. Few are slow, are allowed to serve in the military or the police. We have little doubt Tehran is eager to meddle wherever it can. For Bahrain, the real domestic threat comes from ignoring the legitimate demands and needs of its people. Bahrain is home port of the United States Navy's Fifth Fleet, and the Obama administration has been too cautious in its criticism of the government. It must speak out more forcefully. If Bahrain continues to abuse its citizens, it will face more instability, and resentment of the United States will only grow. A court in South Carolina jailed Michael Turner for 12 months for civil contempt because he owed $5,728.76 in accumulated child support. He could have avoided jail by proving he was indigent and could not pay, but Mr. Turner could not afford to hire a lawyer to make that argument, and the state did not provide him one. While an indigent defendant may have a right to counsel in some civil cases where he could lose his liberty, the Supreme Court, in a 5-4 to four ruling, found that there is no such automatic right in a child support case like Mr. Turner's where the parent may face jail time. The court, however, said there is a right to safeguards that reduce the risk of improper incarceration, like an opportunity to present financial information to the court. The Supreme Court's ruling does not go far enough in ensuring fairness. In civil contempt proceedings, a court may not impose punishment if it is clear that the individual is unable to comply with the order. But without a lawyer, it is very hard for defendants like Mr. Turner to show that they cannot comply. Justice Stephen Breyer, writing for the majority, said that the due process clause does not automatically require a court appointed lawyer in child support collection cases and that procedural safeguards could follow. He was especially concerned about the potential unfairness of providing a lawyer to an indigent parent if the opposing parent does not have one. He left room, however, for a right to counsel to be found in other situations like a hearing where a state lawyer presses a defendant for support payments owed to the state. The charge in response 
to questions about technical status is not a substitute for having a lawyer to ensure that no parent in a civil contempt proceeding is jailed for being poor, the court should extend the right to counsel.